What is a NAS? Well, it's a network attached storage, a spot where you can go and save all of your files. And that's great. And that's one of the main purposes of using a NAS. But there's a whole lot more stuff that you can do on your NAS. You don't have to go and buy all these other little bits and pieces because your NAS could potentially do it all out of the box. Pretty cool. Stay tuned. Before we do get into that, remember as always to click on that subscription button, click on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Now, what is the main purpose of a NAS? I mean, ultimately, the name suggests it's a storage device for a network, right? So you've got computers that plug in with an ethernet cable with a Wi-Fi connection, whatever it is, and you do computer stuff. And maybe you save some files on computers and maybe you've got USB sticks floating around. Now you stick it all inside of a NAS and your NAS is now storing all of the data in one spot. NASs can be used at home, NASs can be used in businesses, they're used absolutely everywhere. They come in small, they come in very, very big sizes, all different shapes and configurations. They're awesome. And what's cool is a NAS is not just a storage device. Most of the big brands of NASs that are out there do actually allow you to have additional functionalities, additional features that a lot of people don't actually know about or think about. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you my top five. We're gonna count down from number five down to number one, but this is not a conclusive list of every single thing that a NAS can do. I'm, I'm telling you, a NAS could probably do like 20, 30, 40 other things outside of these five, but I've sort of condensed this down to my favorite five things. Hey, um, here's the thing. I'm gonna give you a few little bonuses at the very, very end. So once I've given you my number one recommendation, I'll give you just a few other little things that you can think about. We won't talk about them, but at least I'll give you, you know, some thought about some other things you can do. Let's check it out. Here's number five. Now there's a lot of websites out there on the internet and a lot of these websites are running some sort of CMS software or the actual, uh, the bit of code that makes a website a website. One of the more popular ones out there is one called WordPress. Here's the thing, you can run a website directly on your NAS. Now let's talk a little bit about how you can actually do that. Let's give you this scenario where you're running a NAS at home. Here's what you need to do. Firstly, have yourself some sort of an IP address that is provided to you by your service provider. All right, so you go out and you get your service provider, your, your really fast internet, well, some of these service providers will give you what's called a static IP address. This static IP address is unique to you. And essentially because it's a static IP address, it never changes. And if your ISP has allowed this, you can actually access that IP address directly from the internet, right? So if you've got a NAS at home, what you can actually do is you can actually set up your NAS with some web server software. Right? A lot of the more common brands of NASs have got app stores, essentially. If you think about your iPhone, your Android device, there's an app store where you can go and download apps. Well, a lot of NASs have got app stores as well, where you can actually go to a store and search for certain software to then download it. I mentioned WordPress. WordPress is one of the most popular web development platforms out there. You can actually go to the app store, here it is, download WordPress. Behind the scenes, it installs like a database called a SQL database. It'll install some software, PHP, HTML code, and then it installs the CMS. In this case, the WordPress software. You then log in, configure the thing, all right? And that's a WordPress website running on your thing. And you can fully customize it. WordPress is free, free, free. You can set up these really nice things to make it look and feel. There's all these plugins that you can download and it works pretty, pretty good. But now the tricky thing is how do you get the World Wide Web to be able to communicate with your WordPress website that's running on your NAS? Well, what you need to know is you need to know the IP address. This is now a private IP address for your NAS. This is like the IP address that your home network is running on. The NAS itself has an IP address and you need to get a little bit fancy here and do this at your own precaution. You need to log into your router, to your modem, to whatever's giving you your internet, right? Your, your internet's coming in to this router. You need to be able to log into that. I'm sort of an admin credentials and you need to do what's called port forwarding. You need to open up the ports that allow web traffic into your web, like your website. So commonly it's gonna be ports 80, if you know that HTTP and port 443 for HTTPS. Essentially you are now punching a hole through your router's firewall to allow the traffic to flow into port 80 and 443 on your website. And then all you do is literally within your router, you're essentially gonna create a port forward rule that is gonna talk from your public IP address. This is the IP address, your static IP address that your ISP is giving you. You're gonna say, well, that forward all traffic from 80 to 443 
to the IP address of your NAS. And if everything works, you should now be able to log in and put in the IP address. That is the IP address, the static public IP address that has been given to you by your service provider and see if you can actually hit your WordPress website. You wanna get even more fancy, you then go and buy yourself a really, really nice domain name like your www.emilioaguero.net domain name and then you can point that to your IP and then you can access it through a cool domain name. So if you are gonna do this, just be aware of security, set it up properly, uh, but it's a really good way to be able to host your website. The next one is to set it up as a private cloud. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, look, you've got all these files on your NAS, stacks of stuff. You've then got the more known cloud file storage platforms, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, iCloud, right? These are all the big ones, the ones that you know about. These are the ones where you can go and create yourself a nice Dropbox account, dump some files in there and say, hey, friends, family, here's a link to go and access all of those files. And you can do that and that works fine. But you know what? Because you've got a NAS, you could potentially do that on your NAS itself. Well, your NAS now becomes the Dropbox, becomes the Google Drive, becomes your own cloud, your own private cloud that you can then manage. You've got all your files, you set up your permissions, you structure it properly, and then you can actually get your friends and family access to files that are stored on your NAS. You don't have to upload them to these third-party solutions like Dropbox and Google Drive, what I said before. You can actually do it directly from your NAS itself. Really, really cool. Same sort of deal, go up to your app store on your NAS and see if you can go and download some software that sets it up accordingly. Very similarly, you're gonna be opening up a little bit of a hole on your firewall to be able to allow traffic, secure traffic to get access to those files. But as long as you're securing it properly, as long as you're doing proper, what's called access controls, allowing only certain usernames and passwords in, that sort of jazz, you'll be pretty good. Run it yourself, you got full control, you are the full administrator of your files and the full administrator of who is sharing those files. You don't have to give all your files to some company that you don't even know what they're doing with your files. Who knows what they're doing with those files? I don't wanna know. Now one thing that is uh, really, really important is to actually make sure that you are backing up stuff, right? So you've got a NAS, all of your files are on there, great. You've probably got computers out on a network. Again, whether you've got a NAS running at home or at work, you've got computers, you've got all these devices where there's stuff stored, right? You maybe have some servers built or desktops and laptops and things like that. You can actually set up what's called backup software on your NAS and convert your NAS into a backup solution. A solution where you've got some cool software that again, you can download. I keep saying going back, going to the App Store. I mean, the App Store is like the gold, it's the, the, like the gold, gold mine. The gold pits, the gold, where you go and find gold. There's lots of gold there. Go and download the apps and then you can set it up so that you can back up stuff. And then you can set up software. You point this backup software to this computer, to this computer, to this computer, to this location where there's some files, even backing up your own NAS itself. And then you can set it up so that it automatically does backups every single day, every hour, every week. You can back it up to the cloud. You can back it up to another NAS. You can back it up to a USB stick and then get those backups out of there, right? Like if you're gonna back it up to a USB stick, you're gonna back up all your stuff to a USB stick get that USB stick out of here, right? Don't have it near your NAS. I mean, this is a little little professional IT recommendation. So many places have their, uh, their NAS where all their data is, the production data, the main data, that's the only spot where they have all their data. And then they're running backups to a USB drive which is just sitting on top of the NAS. Cool, all right, yeah, you got backups. But then what happens if there's a fire? What if there's some flooding? What if something like that happens? You lose both the main NAS data and you lose your backups. Stupid, don't do that. Get that backup, send it off site, and then this way you've got the confidence that all of your files, all of your servers, all of your computers, everything are all adequately backed up. But here's number two, VPN. VPN, VPN, VPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. Essentially allows you to have a connection directly to your NAS, directly to your home or to your business network that is encrypted, that is secure. Okay, so what I do, for example, is I have some software running on my NAS, again from the App Store, that allows me to convert my NAS into a VPN system. A system where I can now go from my phone, I can go from a computer, I can be anywhere in the world, and I can actually connect to a VPN that is running on my NAS at home. And then because my NAS is on my home network, 
I can then get access to everything in my home from anywhere. Like essentially the VPN is like as if I'm in front of my computer at home, as if I'm in front of any computer, any device, any smart home device that I've got at home, even in an office, it's like I'm right there, but I'm not right there. I'm somewhere else. So you can connect a VPN. And you, you may have been familiar with, you know, if you've ever worked for a company that uses VPN to allow you to access, you know, business services, business devices, the network, the, you know, the server, the data. Businesses have got VPNs everywhere, but now you can set one up yourself. Now, one that I recommend and one that I love is called OpenVPN. There's an OpenVPN uh, app that I can get from my phone. Right, And then all I do is the same deal what I mentioned with the very, very first point around having a static IP address. You do a similar sort of thing. As long as you've got a static IP, you can then pass the traffic through a secure port to a VPN connection that is set up and configured directly on your NAS. It's brilliant. And then this way, I can see and monitor my entire network and see exactly what's going on in every computer at home as if I'm at home because I'm doing it through a VPN. Now here's my number one. Remember, I've got a few other little bonuses at the very end, setting it up as a server. Setting it up as a server. It's actually a computer. The NAS inside, yeah, there's heaps of disks, right? There's all these disks inside of that, like a normal computer. But there's actually also a CPU, there's RAM, there's a graphics card, there's network cards, there's all of these bits inside of a NAS, the same as what you've got inside of a computer. So it is practically a computer. However, it's more like sort of dedicated for storage, but it's still a computer, which means you can actually set up your NAS as a server. You can run server software on your NAS. I mean, we talked about setting up a VPN. Well, it's sort of running as a VPN server. We talked about WordPress. It's sort of running as a WordPress server. I'm not talking about that necessarily. I'm more talking about that you can actually build and run fully fledged Windows servers, fully fledged Linux servers on a NAS. So there's software that you can get for a NAS that allows you to actually build virtual machines, right? You think about like in the corporate world, you've got these virtual platforms called like VMware, you've got Hyper-V, you've got Proxmox, you've got all these virtualization platforms, hypervisors and this sort of stuff. You can sort of do the same thing with your NAS. You can actually go and get the software, configure it on your NAS so that I can now build a Windows 11 VM on my NAS connect to it, use it as normal. How awesome, I can go and set up my Ubuntu, my CentOS Linux box running directly on my NAS. Here's the only little thing, the only thing you've got to think about, is when you are setting up a server on a NAS, you are sharing some of those resources with that virtual machine. So if you're gonna build a Windows computer, right, you need to give that Windows computer a bit of RAM, a bit of CPU, a bit of disk space. Where is it gonna get it? Well, it's getting it from your NAS. So the more powerful your NAS is, the more resources you can give to these VMs because your VMs running, uh, they're, they're gonna suck a little bit of juice, a little bit of juice from your NAS to give it to these VMs running servers, super cool. Now here are a few little bonuses, run emails an email server directly on your NAS. I love home automation, so I've actually got a whole bunch of home automation stuff. Yeah, you got Alexa, you got Siri, you got all of these other things, but what if I could manage it all directly on my NAS? I love one called Home Assistant. Go and check it out. You can install it for free. You can do it through Git. You can do it through a Docker container. Home Assistant, really, really cool, and I can manage my entire home, see exactly what is going on. Another one, surveillance. You wanna manage your CCTV stuff. You wanna manage cameras, USB cameras, ethernet cameras, Wi-Fi cameras. You can also do that as well by having some surveillance software running on your NAS and I do that and I think it's brilliant. And then finally, one that I always recommend, and I've done full videos on these other ones, is to actually have it running with a media server. Where We talked about servers already, but this is now where we're installing something like Plex and you can run videos, TV shows, movies, all that stuff. You store them on your NAS and then you stream them out in 4K, in HD, whatever K you want. You pick up your phone, you pick up your Apple TV, you pick up any smart device that has some sort of video software on there. It's like running your own version of Netflix directly on your NAS, except that your NAS is the Netflix and all of the content where the Netflix would store stuff is actually on your NAS and you're just streaming that to all the devices. Very, very cool. Let us know down below in the comments, what do you use your NAS for? What are some ideas that you could give me, others that are watching this video, about what they could use their NAS for? Hey, if you like this channel, do the subscription thing, do the like thing as well. Smash that like button, really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.